limbo. Yeah. And but, I yeah. was so angry and so <laughs> upset. I mean, I was really upset because, one, I wasn't given a choice to be baptized. Two, it meant that, like, my grandma, you know, my grandpa, my cousins, which I could live without, you know, yeah, the Jewish side, um, <laughs> were all going to limbo. And I had no choice. And basically, you can't, like, undo baptism, you know, <laughs> quote, unquote, if you know what I mean. <laughs> and I just was, like, not a happy girl and started questioning everything. So I totally hear where you're coming from because it's a joke. Let's get right, well, into a yeah. little – oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was going to say another uh, great uh, um, mentor or muse of mine, I, I've just finished – publishing a book of hers Barbara Walker was telling us tell, in her book talks about how her minister said that her dog would not her dog had just died and the minister said well I'm sorry but there'll be no, no no dogs in heaven and so she said well to heck with your heaven then I'm going with my dog and mm-hmm. <laughs> that was kind of like her awakening at that point was, to be, you know, I mean, that reminded me of a, a story of uh, this this woman, this friend of mine who was a Catholic, and she was telling me, she was getting on in years, and she was in pain, and she said, well, I just can't wait to die and go to heaven to meet my Jesus. And I, I, I said to her, well, that would be my hell. <laughs> she became <laughs> very, very upset and threw a couple of epithets at me. But I mean, my point there was that what they have depicted as sitting on a cloud and singing songs at the feet of the giant white, giant man in white robes, uh, for all eternity, is not my idea of heaven. So you know, this is. Well, I just <laughs> figured the party is going to be in the other place, and you know, that's where <laughs> me and most of my friends are going to be. But let, yeah. let's kind of turn our attention to. <laughs> there, there was a comment in the chat room. When are they going to get to the meat? Like okay, here yeah, we some got two hours beef of beef on rye. You're gonna get <laughs> oh, trust me, I got I got plenty of juice here. You know, some people um, actually like the background of biographical material, so it's different. <laughs> it's different. Um, I mean, basically, and I'm just going to kind of lay a little piece of groundwork here. I mean, basically, what we're going to be talking about is the basis of Christianity and whether there is any factual basis in Christianity. So that's kind of our our groundwork. Um, And so this is the first question I would like to throw out there. I mean, we are introduced to Jesus in the New Testament, you know, obviously in the books of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Um, Weren't these books historical documents of his life? I mean, weren't they supposedly written by the apostles about their experiences Hanging out with Jesus, partying with him. Well, sure, that's the impression given. First of all, I like to, not to call these documents because they're really they're not by the strict standards of documentation. These are not very well done. Uh, but you have to know that it, the claim, the, the Orthodox claim, is that only two of them were direct apostles or disciples of Jesus, and that would be Matthew and uh, um, John. And then Mark and Luke are just kind of repeating hearsay. And so, but then if you know that Mark is, I don't think Mark is the the first one, but I think that Ur Mark is is, a, is the first text. So it, just let's say for Mark for for uh, interest here, we can call it Mark. That if this this is the first gospel, which is a very common mainstream perspective, and yet this guy wasn't anywhere around at the time, uh, then, and the other one's copied from him. You know, it's like, why would Matthew, who's supposed to be a close eyewitness, be copying from a guy who wasn't even there? And same thing with, uh, well, Luke Luke copies too, but Luke is not uh, supposed to have been around Jesus either. So, John, and John's book is so off the wall and so patently late in... Uh, in its language and the concepts it depicts, that it's very difficult to make that claim, too, that this had something to do with the guy who was actually there and watching the story. So all of these these uh, claims start to fall apart when you look really closely. From the outside, if you want to believe the story, someone's told you in church and so forth and so on, uh, 
without really looking closely at it. That's your, your business, obviously. But if you look really closely, first of all, you don't find any evidence externally, that any solid, credible scientific evidence external to the New Testament that, that even goes remotely into this story. There's some odd rumors from 100 years before that, and there's other Jesuses mentioned in Josephus, and then, of course, then there's the whole Testimonium Flavianum, which is patently a forgery. But, of course, that's widely disputed. But if you look closely at these, and at my book, Who is Jesus? Fingerprints of the Christ, really analyzes the four canonical Gospels and shows <clears throat> where all the problems are and how they don't show up in the historical or archaeological record until the second century. So we don't even have any evidence that these were in existence anywhere near the time of when Christ supposedly existed. Even the language of them, of the Greek, is uh, later than it's being 